What a ride! Let's play! Come on, got some better to How's it going everybody? Today I'm reviewing the highly anticipated Suicide Squad. It was probably like my number, in my top five for most anticipated of the year. I'll have to go back and check to see the exact number. Uh, it takes place in the DC Cinematic Universe, kind of following the events of Batman v Superman, where Amanda Waller assembles this team of villains to fight down an even bigger enemy. I was really looking forward to this one. I saw the somewhat negative reviews of it. I didn't really listen to them, I didn't really watch them, but I saw the number on Rotten Tomatoes for that matter. Uh, so I was a little skeptical, but I was still excited because I, I was still looking forward to it. I was looking forward to see the Joker. I was looking forward to see Harley Quinn. Uh, I was just looking to see this gang of misfits band together in a similar vein to Guardians of the Galaxy. So overall with this film though, I like parts of it, but there's other parts I didn't like so much. Uh, it, it came out being an, a fine, a, a good experience, a, a decent movie. Uh, one I could say, if you're looking forward to it, go check it out for sure. Um, but not one I'm like, if, you, if you're if you skeptical on it, I would probably say, you could you could wait. You don't need to rush out to the theater to see it, unfortunately. Unfortunately. I didn't want to say this. I just wanted this to be one of my favorite movies of the year. But let's start off with the good in the film. Uh, Harley Quinn is a standout in my eyes. She, Margot Robbie brought this character to life. Uh, I have seen her briefly in the animated series, but mainly my main exposure to her is from the... Uh, Arkham games um, so I thought she she was perfect as Harley Quinn she was perfect she was funny she was witty she was crazy she had a little bit of heart but overall she was a nutcase uh, which was awesome Deadshot was great you got to see a lot of uh, the the emotional side to Deadshot you got to kind of connect with him and you understand where he comes from but he's still a bad person at the end uh, or is he you can make that decision but uh, he was great in the film I really liked Amanda Waller I thought Amanda Waller was menacing uh, she was a badass. She's she's almost like more evil than the Suicide Squad people, but like, I, I loved her. I love Viola Davis as Amanda Waller. Some of the side ones that I liked uh, was Diablo. Diablo surprised me. I, I have no idea about this character. I have nothing, no experience with him. For all I know, he was made up. I know he wasn't, but he could have been. Uh, he was great. Uh, you really got to connect with him, and like, he's probably going to be a lot of people's favorite of the Suicide Squad. Rick Flagg was also a good addition. He was fine. He wasn't bad in it. Uh, Tom Hardy was originally supposed to play the role, but Joel Kinnaman had to because he had to go for reshoots on uh, The Revenant because that went over time. But uh, they were all great in it. And probably the big question is, how was the Joker? How was the Joker? Heath Ledger is the best. He's the best Joker. I wasn't expecting Jared Leto to top him. Uh, and he doesn't. He doesn't. He's not in the movie as much as you might think, though. Uh, so if you're expecting a lot of Joker, just check your expectations at the door. He's in it for maybe 10 to 15 minutes overall screen time. So just just be warned about that. But from what I saw, I liked him. Uh, he's a different take on it. He's kind of more of like his mob boss uh, kind of thing. But but I liked it. I liked it for overall. And again, you're not quite seeing him uh, as the full-on Joker because he's not in it for a lot of the movie. But I'm intrigued to see him in future films. Also, Jai Courtney as Captain Boomerang uh, was good. He was good. He was funny. Probably Jai Courtney's best role uh, film-wise in recent memory because he's he's been almost like a franchise killer with like Terminator and, and films like that. Uh, but he was good for, for what he was in. He was kind of in the background here and there. And uh, that was that. Some of the action was, was pretty good as well. Uh, minus the third act, which we'll get to in a second. And uh, the soundtrack. The soundtrack is awesome. Uh, right from the opening. Uh, you, you, the music starts playing kind of for each character. They kind of have their own theme song, if you want to call it that. Uh, so I love the soundtrack throughout the whole film. It's worth seeing just for the soundtrack, for that matter. And of course, there's a lot more humor in this film, a lot more joyful than Batman v Superman, which kind of transitions into my negatives. But there was a lot more humor, but a lot of the humor didn't work, and it felt like they were adding humor for the sake of adding humor instead of it flowing kind of organically. And as I was saying with the Joker, there was some characters underused. Uh, Katana was, was underused. She's in it for a bit. She's kind of cool for some of the scenes she's in, especially the action sequences. Uh, but underused, Killer Croc, a little bit underused, um, just just here and there. Also, uh, I can't remember the guy's name. He's a neighbor. I think it's like Ike Barinholtz or something like that. He's in the film, especially for the the first third of the the first act of the film, and I despise his character. He tried to add a lot of humor, and a lot of it seemed forced uh, from him. It just it didn't fit. It didn't fit. I wish the humor was kind of coming more from a Harley Quinn or Deadshot in the beginning act, um, and he didn't work for me really at all. Uh, another thing that didn't really work at all was the antagonist. Uh, I'm not going to ruin it because I didn't really say it in the trailers, but when the villain comes around, uh, for the first third, when you find out who this villain is, you're like, okay, I'm, I'm not, I, I kind of like the villain. But by the last act of the film, 
yeah, it was cringe-worthy, man. I did not like the villain at all, at all in the third act. Also, there's some weird editing decisions here and there. It felt very choppy, uh, very unbalanced as a film, and the story overall was just boring. Uh, it was very simple. It was a very simple premise, almost too simple, that I wasn't invested into it. It tries to make this... It's only one night, also. So maybe my expectations were, were too high for this. I thought it was going to be this crazy, big, bombastic thing. Um, and it's just over one night, but they try to make the scale big, but it's still contained, and it was just a weird balance. It was a weird balance. But that's pretty much the main issue with it, is the story and, and everything. The crew itself, the crew's chemistry, is what drives this film. And it kind of took like half an hour for you to finally get the crew all together. And also you get to see kind of their, their origin through flashback, and I wish they either dedicated more time to it at the beginning, or had the crew come together sooner. Uh, it, it was just a weird balance. Um, but some of the flashbacks, especially at Harley's and uh, Deadshot's, do work. They do work. I just almost wanted more. I wanted more, especially from Harley's. I wish I could have just known more of her interaction with the Joker. And I think that would have been a lot more interesting uh, of the film to do that and spend a little bit more time with it because uh, she's a very complex character. But overall, there is stuff to like in it. There is a lot of humor in it. The, the crew's interaction is what drives the film. If you fall in love with these characters, I guarantee you will at least enjoy the film. Uh, again, the story is kind of what holds it back. It's kind of choppy editing-wise, and uh, the pacing is just all over the place, and the third act is a little ugh. Um, also, there is a post credit scene or mid credit scene that is very cool, uh, kind of almost like one of the highlights of the film for me. Uh, it's very small, very small, but a, a good moment nonetheless. Uh, but yeah, that's overall my thoughts on the film. I think maybe my expectations were too high, or what I was expecting was not what I got. So I'm going to see the movie again tonight. And I think I might enjoy it more now that I know what to expect. Uh, so I can hopefully just fall in love with these characters a bit more and just enjoy their interactions between each other. So that's it. For my movie rating, I give it a movie rating of a 6.5 out of 10. Just as a film on itself, it, it works on some ends and it doesn't work on others. As for my enjoyment rating, I give that a 7 out of 10. Again, you do fall in love with these characters. Harley Quinn, a standout. I really enjoyed the Joker. Deadshot's awesome. And uh, I loved Amanda Waller as well. So there is good stuff in the film. Uh, it just, it, I think for me, this first screening kind of got overshadowed by the story. And like I said, going to see it again tonight, and I think that might change. So anyways, let me know if you're looking forward to Suicide Squad in the comment section below. Let me know if you did see it, what you liked, what you didn't like, what your kind of score out of 10 would be on it. Because uh, I'm curious, I, I know there's some, some mixed reaction on it. I know some people really like it, some people don't like it, some people in the middle of the road. I'm kind of middle of the road towards liking it. Um, so that's that for you. Again. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Be sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for more videos each and every week. That is it, and I will talk to y'all later.